Well, hello there, my childish Gambinos, and welcome back for another episode of Draw with Mikey. This is, of course, for people not in the know, the super casual, super laid back, chilled out, whatever kind of series. There's loads of swearing and spoiler alerts and all that sort of thing. And it's just an opportunity for me to read through your comments and see what's going on with you guys. Because um, there's been a bit of, not a hiatus, like the art's still coming out on the channel. But um, I've not been busting out any video games recently because, as ever, time is just, it's not on my side. Like, I'm taking on a few projects and it means that I have got very little spare time. This episode as well, probably coming out on a Friday now, seeing as it's uh, Thursday and I'm just trying to catch up with everything. So if you guys have got something you want to say and you realise that it's a little bit busy in the uh, comment section of all the other videos, this is the place to go. Get yourself down in the comments, tell me what's going on, ask me anything, we'll talk about anything, I really don't care. And uh, yeah, I get to see what's going on with you lovely lot. So, um, from last episode, it's not the time lapse, the actual last episode, uh, gotta be Sienna Wilson says, I've never been first. And then Zero Call was like, shut the fuck up. So basically, yeah, well done for getting in first you uh, notification crew, I dare say. All up in the videos, always a pleasure to have you. Matt G. Mazzi says, man, you're an artist genius. Thank you very much, Matt G. I do deeply appreciate that. And Springholic wants me to draw Lee and Clementine. Characters that I do not know. Is that from a manga? So in the last episode, I was drawing... Oh, they're from the Walking Dead game. Ah, okay, cool. So yeah, in the last episode, the time-lapse drawing that was going on in the background, because obviously um, this whole series is just me mostly doing whatever I want in the sketchbook whilst we talk on top of it, I was doing some Last of Us stuff because I got my hands on a digital copy of the Last of Us art book. Oh man, that's so good. And like, there's something I really love is uh, concept art. Whenever you see like a film or a video game, I'm an absolute like hard-on for all of the artwork that was in a design process that never quite made it to the final cut. That shit is always the coolest shit to me. Um, so yeah, I was looking at that and the zombie designs that didn't quite make it. So after having a big look through that book in today's sketchbook episode, I'm just kind of taking on that October vibe and I thought it'd be nice to draw some zombies. And also The Walking Dead should be back on like really, really soon, which I'm just fucking pumped for. Who does Negan kill? I want to know. I kind of don't want to know because I know who it is in the comics and I really, really hope it's not him. But I don't want to spoil it for you lovely people. Tim Know Your Damn Business says, I'm one of the first ones here. Of course you are. The end is near. You finished what you're working on and you've linked me to your project. It's a sample. You don't even know if the story is going to keep going. Oh, I've managed to... Oh, I didn't hot link it to another tab. I've taken myself off my own page with your comments. Oh, shit. It's a panel from your manga. And... Oh, man. <laughs> this guy's motherfucking these lizard people. Okay. Very, very cool. Mate, I think that's awesome. Like, have you ever had an idea where you're just, you want to kind of get like a story out, but maybe you don't have a story yet or a project, but you've got this like scene or a panel in the manga and just start with that and then like develop around it like you've done. So yeah, this motherfucker's chopping shit up. Very, very cool. And I love your character design. Sir, definitely continue with that if you can be convinced to do so. Right, I need to go back off this tab, get through the fucking adverts that are playing on my YouTube channel, and then now I have to reorganize your comment into order and then open all the tabs. Sorry to hold you guys. Today as well, don't know if you can hear this in the background. Today's not a cup of tea day because it's actually quite late in the evening i've taken this opportunity to get this episode out of the way um so now we've entered the red wine zone if anything yeah real late stuff and today we've got a cheeky argentinian malbec pretty much the only red wine i will drink so uh yeah if i get really sweary later on or some really strong opinions you'll know what's going on there let's give that a cheeky little oh delicious I've been letting that breathe since I started. Excellent. So uh, what else is going on? Brian Perry, smiley faces ever. And Zappy Zor says, if you could have a weapon and armor, what style and type would you have? In terms of real life, um, I guess in terms of actual, actual real life, probably like a silenced automatic machine gun or something like that. Because, you know, that would actually take care of business in an actual fight situation. In terms of just general, if we lived in a super cool society, I'd probably have um, one of my samurai swords, which I actually have. Just looking over my shoulder, if um, my voice has gone far away. And uh, yes, quite for collection. Some are wall hangers, some are genuine actual folded steel blades, and one of them is double-edged. That's a motherfucker. What about you, Zapizor? What weapon would you have? In terms of armor, um, 
I don't know, actually. Like, um, just day-to-day -day clothes. Really tough clothes. I wear, like, a bike jacket a lot because I ride a motorcycle sometimes. That's kind of technically armour as well. So, yeah, maybe that. But, like, what's the scenario, Zapizor? Is it if we lived in a fantasy fighting world? Or are you talking about today or if you had to go fight in Syria or something for and or against ISIS? Hopefully against because they're arseholes. Um, then let me know. Kid Fresh Lit, TL34. First off, Mikey's singing his back, bitches. Yeah, the uh, tutorials that I've been singing in, that is back on the cards. But I've missed the last couple tutorial slots and um, the last probably SAS as well. And the reason why is because I got that sweet-ass new um, fucking Cintiq Companion 2. Probably they're going to release a Companion 3 now that I've finally spent some money on it, which is fucking amazing. But it means that I'm really just trying to pour a lot of time into getting used to using that, the touchscreen, resetting the controls, calibrating and stuff. So... For this Saturday, it's not quite an SAS. It's actually just going to be like a time-lapse art piece. I did like a study of someone's face. And mostly that was so I could get used to things in Photoshop. The actual time-lapse video itself is a little bit zoomed in because I actually um, didn't quite set up OBS screen recorder properly as well. So, ah oh man, it really hurts. But basically, it's just a black and white thing. So bear with and eventually we will be back on track. And then hopefully as winter sets in, I'm an outside less... I can really rack up a bit of video game Let's Plays as well, because I know you guys frothing at the bit to watch me cry my eyes out and shit my pants to Dead Space 2. But also, I was thinking of the original Resident Evil, Resident Evil Remastered or whatever, because I've always been curious about that, because I loved Resident Evil 2 on a PS, um, PS1. That was one of the best PlayStation 1 games, definitely top 5. And uh, I never played the first one, so I don't know what happened there. It'll be good. Um, however, oh my god, I've done it again. I'm just clicking these links. Um, to an excellent RAM, oh god, f <laughs> fucking adverts, to an excellent RAM and or REM image that you've been working on. So that was really, really cool. But now, once again, I've just got to go and actually put your comment in order. If this was professional, I'd obviously cut this bit out. Let's go newest first. Instead, you can have some dead air whilst I sip some wine. Mmm. Delicious. Oh! Mmm. That's not quite as good as the Malbec I'm used to. I'll have a different one. I'm just going to let that breathe a little bit more and swirl that around the glass. So, um, yeah, what is going on with you guys? That's always what I want to know. Get yourself in the comments and, of course, let me know. This is pretty much my only opportunity these days to see what's going on. Some of you guys obviously submit your artwork on Facebook, which is awesome. And sometimes you do it on Twitter as well, which is kind of cool. But I'm really bad at checking out what's going on there. So, yeah, Kid Fresh. That is an excellent bit of fan art. If you've not traced that and drawn that, you have got some genuine skills. I'm very impressed. Atomic Chronic. Oh, shit, Mikey Mega Mega, you sound way better. Thank you very much, sir. And Daisuke Uchiha says, I'm designing characters for my own manga series. Awesome. I want to see him. Very cool. Draw a Vic. What's going on? Mikey. Wow. <laughs> you spelt my name in an incredible way. M-I-K-I-E. Wow. What are some tips to becoming a YouTube artist? I'm trying it out, but I don't know. Do you have some tips or comments, please? I would say upload your drawings try to do it regularly and don't worry it sounds really weird but don't worry too much about the youtube side as long as you're enjoying your art and you just keep making some nice videos and you keep uploading them then eventually it kind of comes you still have to do that really shit beginning stuff where you it's like pushing a massive boulder up a hill you're struggling to get any views or any subscribers and then it gets easier and easier as you go along and you kind of get used to it it's really weird so not particular tips but focus on the art focus on the bit that you like and as long as you're doing that, the YouTube stuff will eventually catch up. That's um, pretty much all I've got to say. Free Techno Nico says, I loved your singing. And may I also say the first second of the video is the best one ever. Oh, for the little stop scene about the Patreon link with some pretty girls in the pictures. Very nice. Glad you liked it. Anderson Scarborough says, Mikey, I just needed this today. I wanted a day to come home from school and just draw. Excellent. Bloody love it when you guys just draw in the background. Um, draw along with Ellie and Joel drawing. Freaking perfect. Anyways, keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Anderson. Thank you very much, sir. Anime Art, Julian Blair. Hey, Mikey. Hey, Anime Art, Julian Blair. Thanks for answering the zombie question. And what are your thoughts on Siren and Zombie Powder? I think they're awesome, but have bad art. Heard of it, never read it. So that will have to go on the list. Zombie Powder, I've heard of. The only um, zombie manga I've ever read is, um, unsurprisingly, High School of the Dead. Um, but only the beginning bits of it. I haven't really massively gotten into the story. And also, you're a giant Berserk fan. Of course you are. Um, except for Guts on a Boat. <laughs> yeah. I can't even remember what it was, but I saw a meme somewhere. And it was something like, 
um enjoy reading berserk you'll be on this boat for a fucking year or something like that that is that is some long shit um an excellent excellent manga is berserk i go on about it all the time because i love it but for those of you not in a know its release schedule is problematic at best so uh yeah you just uh you struggle to keep up gabriel edwards are you gonna make a tutorial for drawing a bum by its left which i'm sure you probably meant to mean itself um no nah, we've got enough bum tutorials out of the way as far as i'm concerned so maybe later down the line but no time soon we've covered it um a various bits in other tutorials in general and eventually i need to get um the last of my female tutorials out of the way so we can finally do some guy tutorials so that you can all finally stop bugging me about why I don't draw men. Which, bear in mind, I draw plenty of male characters and loads of other stuff. We just haven't got round to it in the tutorials. Sky Carl says, beware of a savage jaw, Mikey. That was a reference to your 1984 theme of a DWM episode. It's the lyrics from Bowie's song. Ah, for Xenia, now I understand. I thought that was um, a particular Ibiza bant. But yes, actually, yeah. And oh... So, oh, um, yeah, don't get me involved. Basically, no, no, um, don't get me involved. So I'm losing my words. I'm just saying don't get me hyped up because looking into the whole Bowie, Ziggy, Stardust era and all of the other characters that surrounded that is so freaking cool. I missed it, Sky Carl. I've let you down. I do apologize. And it was 1984 stuff. Sebastio7 says, hello, Mikey. Hello, Sebastian. You're an awesome person. Oh, thank you very much. I like your videos about art. Awesome. I draw two. Excellent. I wanted to do a collaboration of art of someone I follow. I feel comfortable by drawing level. I wanted to ask you if I liked the idea. You've leaked me to your deviant art, which I'm going to open in a new tab this time, so I don't have to keep going back. Oh, shit. You've got some skill, sir. You've got some skill indeed. Let's just link on your gallery. Yeah, we're getting over colour work, sir, definitely. But, sadly, I don't have the time for collaborations. Even if um, you're a bit worse, I'll tell you the same. You're actually, you've got some skills, so keep that up. I do like it. But, man, no, my schedule's mental. And, like, I'm thinking of launching quite possibly two different YouTube channels as well come next year. So I've just got to really knuckle down and uh, crack on with the stuff that pays. But thank you very much for the invite. I do appreciate it. Matt Wilson says, great video as always. Great comment, Matt, as always. Thank you very much. You're working on coloring some images of cute sci-fi girls, which I'm going to link in another tab. Also, last week, you've seen all of my Let's Play videos. Oh, wow. That's incredible, man. Thank you very much for the support. That's well cool. I've seen you do some late in the day comments on some videos that I put up a fair while ago. I think you might have been on The Last of Us as well, actually, a while back, because it came up on my phone. So, yeah, really appreciate you uh, tagging along for the gaming. And, uh, do, 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 do. oh, you've really found it easier to um, record your own videos and stuff and focus on the drawing. Oh, yeah, so do I find it easier to focus on drawing when I have a project or a recording or when I just want to draw off screen about the distra distraction of having to record it? So, that's a mixed bag, really. Um, the SAS I do, I have to put a bit of effort into those ones, and obviously I put effort into the tutorial videos. So the tutorial ones I do a bit of work beforehand. I try to work out what I'm trying to teach you or kind of what ideas I'm trying to get across. And then I also try to work out vaguely where I'm going to put characters on the page or what we're going to focus on. So that actually takes time. It do it's not the um, natural spirit of I just want to draw anything and then I relax and do it. That takes a bit of setup. So do the Draw Simple Easy. Because I have to look at whatever the original artwork is, and in my head or on Photoshop, I try to break it down into basic shapes so I can then translate it onto the paper. So they take work, and they take work because I'm recording and I'm making a YouTube video. The sketchbook stuff that you're seeing right now, the Draw of Mikey stuff, that doesn't, because um, even if the camera wasn't there, I would probably be sitting at this desk drawing zombies regardless because i want to i literally this whole sketchbook series is fuck it i do what i want and i just happen to want to fill up the sketchbook it makes me happy so i don't have any problem with some of it other bits of it do take a bit of work but if i didn't enjoy any of it i wouldn't do it because that's not the point of this youtube channel i'm not trying to turn it into a business i am literally doing stuff that i like doing and hopefully it's also nice to watch for you guys as well um but what i do really weirdly get paranoid about is if I'm out and about of a sketchbook and I'm just sitting somewhere in a house and I just start drawing, or if I'm at work and like I've got a notepad near the computer which is full of drawings, I do sometimes think, oh, wish I'd recorded that, that would have been nice. So that's kind of weird. I get this weird lament for not recording stuff. Now I feel like I have to record everything. And you don't. Just live your life and don't stress about it. But that was a very good insider art on YouTube question, sir. Well done. We've taken a lot of time on that. So obviously, like I say before, 
Um, this is my chance to read your comments. Maybe I'm not going to read all of them. Going to probably manage about four out of every five. So if you've been missed out but have got something to say, don't hesitate to get involved next time. And of course I read them all and I bloody love a lot of you. Reject Gamer says, Hey Mikey, I'm working on a Manga Meets American comic books. Can you do a tuition on how to do energy flowing similar to Iron Fist? I think I know what you're getting at. In terms of powers, chi, nen, chakra and all that sort of stuff, there's going to be tutorials on that in the future. So watch for space, sir, as well as different elemental powers as well. Um, Eleven Jinjin says, Attack on Titan taught you a shitload of stuff. Oh, yeah. So this was like um, when we were talking about, have you ever had like, so somebody asked a question. It was a really good one last time. Was there ever anything in a manga or an anime that you watched when you were younger that like taught you a life lesson where from that alone, you kind of walked away from it and thought, oh, shit. I see the world in a different light. So for Eleven Jinjin, Attack on Titan taught you a shitload of stuff. How animes are different from movies. You can hear their thoughts. You see them as pure more so than you do in real life people. You can watch it a hundred times and it still hits a nerve. Yeah, so in terms of the storytelling, it really gets to dive into characters and people. That's for sure. Uh, Casey Ellis says, hey, Mikey. Hey, Casey. Missed the last episode, I think. I need my anime to watch. Send help. Also, I'm getting close to filling up my sketchbook. Now I need to hunt for a new one. Suggestions? Oh, yeah. You're damn right I got a suggestion. So I'm just going off piece really quickly. Wait a minute, guys. Wait. So I'm just getting out the sketchbook that you are seeing right now in the video that I'm filling in. And the reason I love this bad boy is it's A4. The ring binder is along the long edge, but it's also got a perforated edge. So if you tear out the pages, you're tearing out a perfect A4 sheet of paper if you need to scan it in. So until you tear it, it's still bound in the sketchbook. Go for ring bound uh, sketchbooks instead of pages that are glued in because you can open them flat and turn them over and treat them a bit more roughly without stuff like being really annoying to present. And what is this one? This one is a Derwent one, D-E-R-W-E-N-T. Um, I'm not obviously sponsored by them, but the paper quality is really good. It's nice and thick and it's got this little folder space in the back that folds out or it expands, I should say, so that your loose sheets of paper can go in the folder in the back. And it's got an elasticated band to keep it all together. Yeah, that's my recommendation. I uh, got mine from WH Smith, if you live in the UK. And I picked up two because I like them so much back to back. Really enjoying that sketchbook. Yeah, that's my suggestione. Sheila Monson Griggs says, nice last of us drawing. Thank you very much, Shalina. And James Google Wynn says, did you have to make a portfolio at any point? I did, sir, but not for art. I once, in a life so far ago, it was a different world, um, I once got into architecture and studied that at uni for like a, whatever you call it, if it isn't an undergraduate's degree, the other one, like a, uh, uh, not a bachelor's, maybe it's an undergrad, diploma, there we go, when you do it for like two years. So like, um, yeah, I had to get like an architecture portfolio together, which is tough, you have to go to a lot of crits, and when I did art at A-levels before that, I had to kind of do stuff there. Recently, though, no, because I've got a different day job that's got nothing to do with art as much as I like it. Um, I don't have to worry about a portfolio. I just get to do what I want. But portfolios are great to force you to do different art styles and really show off your full range. Like if I had to do a portfolio now, I'd get in some of the like anime stuff, sure. Um, and then I'd get in um, backgrounds, skyscapes, city ideas, technology ideas a range of different mediums. I try to do stuff in acrylic and oil on different surfaces. Really try to mix it up. That's what's really good about portfolios. And God damn it, I get all over that watercolour. I do like a bit of watercolour. So yeah, what about you, James? Are you trying to do one at the moment? And in fact, oh, I have a little burp here. What about all of you guys at home, especially those of you who are trying to get some artwork done while this episode's playing? Are you guys smashing out portfolios of your own? How is that these days? Because I'm out of touch. I'm not trying to get an artist job at the moment. I'm not looking for anything and I'm not um, at school having to go to critical analysis anymore. So what's the vibe of portfolios these days? Is it still as I remember it? Or has everybody got their portfolios on their computers now? Because I used to have to go in and out of places with this massive A1 folder with all like my really wide artwork on it. And you'd have to drag it in and drag it out. And it was long, especially after you go on the bus. And I'm not the tallest guy in the world. So like I had to hold that goddamn thing up. I couldn't just Leave my arm casually by my side, otherwise it'd drag on the floor. Oh, memories. Joel says, when you first... Oh, when you get to do tutorials, I suggest looking up an artist called Nitro Unknown. Let's control C, open a new tab. He does an amazing job of drawing handsome men. Let's have a quick look, sir. Images. 
got skills. Got skills. Oh, he's done some Roberta stuff. And, oh, he's done it. Is this a genos gender swap? Oh, no, it's a character called Imuzu. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying stuff now. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's got some good skills and some good texture application. Okay, very, very cool. Thank you very much, sir. They are not quite full on pretty boys, but they are certainly handsome women as well. Okay, excellent. Um, Viking Sir says, have you ever read the manga Vagabond? If yes, what do you think compared to Berserk? Yes, I have. Compared to Berserk. Incomparable, sir. Except for um, all that stuff in the later part of Vagabond where, like, he thinks he sees Valhalla in his dreams, but it's like the other one where all the dead go to mourn their losses. And he, like, carries all that guilt a bit of the way Guts does about all of his old comrades. So I think that comparison is really strong. Vagabond's obviously shorter and it's finished as far as I'm aware. Um, but definitely... Oh, wait. Oh, shit! No! I'm so sorry. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of Vinland Saga. I'm a fucking idiot. Vagabond? Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, I fucking love Vagabond. Um, obviously, the story is a very familiar one of people who read a lot of manga or watch Japanese stuff because it got made into a, a film before or after a manga. I can't quite remember. But yeah, the artwork is incredible in Vagabond, much like it is in Berserk. I would say the Vagabond art style... I prefer more, um, but it does pull you a little bit away from the really traditional televised anime that you might see. But looking at my manga collection, I've got, just having a look, one, two, three. I've got 33 volumes of Vagabonds, all in Japanese. I've only read about two of them. And, oh, fucking hell, how much? 35 volumes of Berserk as well. Like, I'm an absolute fanboy for both of them. They both hold a very close... Um, places in my heart so great shout blue falcon can you do a song request from your speed drawing um what like you want me to sing like a classic like simply red or something i don't know um what song would you request or are you making music that you want me to use because if i can use it for free and it's good i might just stick it in so uh, yeah get in touch send me a message brandon flores old schooler says i grow my own tea leaves that is incredibly cool you always have tea to drink when you're drawing and watching your videos makes the drawing experience even better awesome thanks for motivating me oh thank you very much sir without your videos i would have stopped drawing thank you for existing oh how how very very kind sir okay and scrollio scrollio where art film ari star says i prefer manga over western comics because i find fully colored pages make it harder for me to tell what's going on in a panel yeah sometimes yeah and I like, so if you take, say, like the panel art from AD 2000 comics, like um, for one where all the um, robots go off and have their own adventures and they fight like loads of people, every panel you have to stop. And they're, they're great panels, they're beautiful bits of art, but you kind of have to decipher what's going on. And there's almost pleasure in that because when they do like a really intricate, lush drawn panel, the artwork in those AD 2000 comics is fucking amazing. In fact, can I... Just going off again, have a little reach. What am I talking about? I've got here, 2000 AD, ABC Warriors. It's called The Chronicles of Chaos and Hellbringer. And the illustrations are done by a guy called Kevin Walker. So go and Google Kevin Walker artwork because his illustrations are incredible. They're so, so good. Um, and you read the story, sure. But every single panel, because it's so intricate and so colourful, you stop and you just soak in the artwork. So it can almost take you out of the story a little bit because it's so incredible. If um, that's if that could be a bad thing, I guess that's it, even though it's amazing. So yeah, I get that with the manga. When you get the whole black and white simplified panels, especially when you're going through like, um, I don't know, One Piece or something like that. Actually, One Piece, one piece panels can get a little bit too crowded. So let's say we're talking about... Um, yeah, let's talk about uncrowded panels. Let's talk about bleach. So when you're especially later bleach, when you're reading that and there's just nothing going on on the page except a bit of text, you can kind of just glide your way through and get back into the story. So yeah, I guess that's kind of my vibe on that, at least to a certain degree. Curse God says, jumping into a volcano is a no-go for me. You won't sink into the lava. You'd stay at the top and cook to death. <laughs> no, man, you don't die. Like, you wouldn't cook to death. You'd be like burnt to oblivion. And like, if you jumped him... You'd have enough like momentum for you go bloop, and you got you know you'd be in it and then super dead. Although yeah, getting up to the top and bearing with the heat and you'd probably be on fire long before you even got to the jump. It's it's a bit troublesome. Yeah, I feel that. Elliot Johansson says jumping into a volcano would burn you alive. Just thought I'd let you know. Thank you very much, sir. And 
I'm in a dad Estrada says hardcore crew. Hashtag hardcore bad boys. Love your vids, man. You should check out Rick Lee's badass artists. Oh, awesome. Again, control C onto the Google. Paste and search. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's done like these the really traditionalized tattoo design style of stuff. Yeah. Absolutely going to have to check more of that out in the future as well. Excellent suggestion, sir. <laughs> Someone is their avatar and a name is scarce is fat. Brilliant. Drowning is considered the most painless death. I heard otherwise. Whilst burning to death is the most painful. Yeah, and no, I've heard plenty of that. Which really makes me feel bad for so many Games of Thrones characters as well. Ari Star says you prefer manga over Western comics because you find fully coloured pages make it harder for you to tell what's going on in the panel. Oh! That's what I've just read. I've gotten confused in my comments. I do this all the time now. I'm getting a bit old these days, guys. You know, Mikey's trousers aren't always on these days. Sometimes he struggles to keep up. Let's sip some wine. That's better now that it's breathed, but it's not amazing. I've gone for a different brand here than I usually get. Just testing it out. Not one over. Tomatone says, uh, thinking regularly of uploading drawing videos. Thank you very much for inspiring me nonstop. Yeah, dude, if you're drawing, any of you, if you're drawing and you've had an opportunity to, like, you know, set your camera phone up so that you've recorded it, especially if it's something you really like, upload that business to YouTube. That's loads of fun. Xavier Frost says, hey, Mikey. Hey, Xavier. I haven't seen you do any human-animal hybrids. Correct me if I'm wrong. Not furries, though. I'd like to suggest Makoto Nanaya from Blaz Blue for the SAS. My last words be delete my browser history. So, yeah, like, I did some um, Mikey Mon Pokemon-style stuff. And I was just playing around with an idea, and then it went into this massive is it furry or not debate. And I realized that I don't want to be a furry artist anyway. So I wasn't massively into it, but it kind of worked fine. Um, I still want to do like some Charizard and Venusaur stuff, but in a completely different style. I'm thinking of making him like Mecha or something like that. So we'll see what happens there. I'll try to grab the companion too and actually use that technology to draw something out. And Rubuzi123 says, Hi Mikey, I have a problem drawing background and perspective. Any suggestions? For perspective and for shortening, I've done some tutorials. It's kind of okay. It's not for background perspectives. I would suggest take all those words you've said and search them in YouTube because there's loads of other artists who've got really good stuff about perspective and backgrounds for your art. Get some YouTube knowledge in there. You don't just have to stick with this channel. There's loads of cool people doing art on um, YouTube. It's so cool. Uh, Mark Paolo Santos says, Hey Mikey, hey Mark, what mangas do you recommend that has a bit of semi-real art style like Berserk and Vagabond? Um, what else? Shigurui. Um, Death Frenzy, I think it might be called in the translation. That is really cool. Um, Zetman, Z-E-T-M-A-N. That has a really realistic style as well with some absolutely fantastical stuff that goes on uh gantz is quite realistic i'd say but incredibly gory so be warned um and what else has that realistic style to it if you want to go really really old school this isn't realistic at all get some original fist of the north star for super overpowered people punching the shit out of each other schizoid 137 hey mikey hey schizoid i had a thought what if you made male drawing tutorials one week and then females the other no i'll do it the way i want to hashtag hardcore crew but thank you for the suggestion um you know what? it's really weird i've simply realized that because i was just doing the female ones and i thought right i'm gonna do all the females get them out of the way and then do the males now that i've started down that path I'm just being stubborn, basically. There's at least uh, maybe six or seven more female tutorials I need to crack on with. And then after that, we'll be on to the males. And then after that, we'll be mixed. And we'll have loads of just mixed bag stuff all the time. And we can do whatever in any order. But because I've started down this path, I'm stubbornly sticking to it. Going to get the girls out of the way. And then we'll get on to the guys. Lovely. Probably in 2017. And Narian TX says you've been using a one by Wacom since February and you love it. Much better than trying to draw with a mouse. Oh, yeah. Even if it's a real cheapo, getting a pen and tablet um, over a mouse will just change your world when it comes to digital art. So good on you. And have I seen a TV show called Z Nation? No. Um, third season premiere tonight. Now, I watch recommended shows like Stranger Things and um, Mr. McRobot and all of that. But I don't actually have TV in my house. Like... There's no aerial connection. I don't have like a box or Netflix or anything like that because um, I'm just a bit weird like that. Like I live in a village. I've got really good internet, so I'll watch something if it's uh, recommended. But I don't just sit down and watch TV. I just like my time. Life's too precious. I can't just sit down and just see if something's on. 
if I want to watch something, I'll watch it and download it or stream it. And then if I'm not doing that, then I'll do something else in my life instead. Um, so yeah, but if it's really good, then recommend it again and maybe I'll have a look and we can talk about it. And if any of you guys are watching Mr. Robot, oh my fucking god! Damn, that season 2 came out of nowhere. There's the last couple of episodes where you realise what's going on to the main guy. When you think like he's just living this regulated life. And it's all really boring for the beginning because it's just about his relationship with his dad in his head. And you're just kind of like... Is season two just this? Is season two really dull? And then you realise that big reveal of where he really is and what's really going on. And you're just like, damn, Dan, you're back at it again. Oh, man. Anyway, memes. Cristiano said, Elia says, Mikey, since you draw Revy from Black Lagoon, I did. Can you also do, draw Roberta? Um, Yeah, she could go on the list. Roberta. Was she the maid? The really like weird maid assassin, I think? Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do her. And Sikorian says, Re-Zombies. I kind of miss the voodoo fantasy style of supernatural zombies. Yeah! I used to watch the old VHS cassettes of old school zombie films where all the zombies were like from the Caribbean and stuff like that as opposed to, you know, virus zombies. Most zombies these days are the biologically dead virus-born zombies. Oh, there we go. They're cool, but it would be nice to see some more old school zombies. You are right, sir. You are right. We need some more old school voodoo zombie bad boys. Um, Codename Zero says, hey Mikey, hello sir, I used to watch Avatar The Last End Airbender, it was so good, have you ever watched it? And this is you speaking on your other account from the Zero Vibes account. Oh, welcome back sir. No, never watched it, never watched Avatar. Um, I've seen clips of it, I know that the vibe is um, the little um, bald kid who's got cancer, he can fly and uh, he's got like a flying stick that turns into uh, a flying thing and then... He's got like um, this really flat faced. It's like a you know how like dogs have long faces and then pugs have really like squashed in faces. So it's the dragon from a never ending story. I forget his name, but it's the pug version. So he rides one of them and then he's like he's really ill and he travels the world looking for a cure to cancer. And then some bitch can play with water and some guys can play with fire. But they're all from Pakistan or something. So they're assholes. I think that's it. Basically, I remember M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong, he fucked it for everybody. So no, I haven't really watched any Avatar, but um, I hear it's so awesome. Having said that, I've never watched any Samurai Jack, and I hear that's fucking awesome as well. So maybe one day I need to stick it on a phone for a drive into work. Or, oh no, I do look at the road, I promise, but stick it on a phone maybe in between work. Maybe when I'm uh, sitting on a toilet. S. Mayad says, hey Mikey, hey S, do you know the mangas of Ini Asano? And if you do, do you like them? No, I don't. Control C. New tab, control V, enter, image search. Oh, so it's just mostly pictures of manga cart artist. Oh, I can see a few panels of his work. Oh, he's one of these people who works really hard at their panels. They look beautiful and incredible and full of day to day life. No, I will have to look this up, sir. S. My Ed, what's your favourite part about this guy? And if he's done more than one manga, what's the best one to start off reading? Cheers to you, sir. Oh, and keep up the amazing work. Thank you very much. You know, I bloody love you guys. A lot of you for all your kind comments, especially the ones that I can't quite read out here. They tend to be the shorter ones, which are just very nice things, basically. So same back to a lot of you. Aaron says, the thing with humanizing Pokemon is called gajinkas. And if you think Americans drinking cold tea is bad, yes, I do. You should see what they put in their tea. It's basically caffeinated juice. Oh, no, no. And yeah, I heard about Gajinkas um, from the comment section of doing those SAS Pokemon things. And uh, yeah, we're probably going to walk away from that. It's not really my vibe. But I did want to play with the idea and test it out. And maybe I'll come back to it in the future because I'll do whatever I feel like. Corby Senior says, I'm definitely staying for the Nico tutorials and all the other tutorials here. Can't draw clothes and folds worth a flippity flap. No, sir. Yeah, we need to get on that. Folds and materials and things. There's so many things. Like... This is it, man. This is why I fucking love drawing so much. It's endless, but in a good way. Like, whatever you know, you can learn more. We've covered a few basic things, but the world of drawing and the topics and the materials and the things, it's, it's so much. And then, even when you've got your style down, that's just you. Like, there's every other person with their own slightly particular way of drawing and their own style of things. And it just, it grows. And it's like, oh, it's cool. It's cool, basically. I love drawing, and I hope you do too. That's, that's basically what I'm getting at. I don't want to get too hyped about it as a concept, because drawing's just awesome. Marcus Creation says, Hey, Mikey. Hey, Marcus. May I suggest an anime to you? You may, sir. It's kind of etchy, but very funny. Okay, I try to keep away from too etchy anime. I get 
obviously because of the SAS that I do, I get a lot of etchy suggestions, and some of them are just borderline hentai, and I'm just like, I don't want that shit sitting on my hard drive. The name is Shimonita. If you watch the first episode, you might think, meh, it doesn't hook, and then three or four episodes in, it gets hilarious, and the characters develop. Okay, I might give this a shot. But you, Marcus Creation, my opinion of your opinion is on the line based on this anime. Let's give this pick enter. Boring world where the concept of dirty jokes doesn't exist. Officially abbreviated Shimon Seka in Japan. Okay, cool. Nice. Nice, sir. Manipulator of 10,000 Ribbons says, Do Naraku in an SAS, maybe, from Sengen Gakura? Sen Senran Kagura, I should say. And Marshall Lee says, Have I ever drawn chibis? No, they're not really for me, but I probably will do a tutorial eventually because I know they're on topic. Basically, make the head one head size, make the bodies another body size, and then, like, the arms become, like, fleshy stumps or something. I forget how it is. Ultra Gaming Saiyan says, Draw me Kassa and Eren. Could do, although I probably... Wouldn't have the Eren in it. And in fact, I've done a Mikasa. In fact, I've done loads of Mikasa. I've done a Mikasa sketchbook page um, way, way back in this DWM series. And I've also done a Mikasa SAS. So Ultra Game and Saiyan, get yourself in the search bar somewhere and you'll probably find them. Luke, new addition to the Mikey's drinking game. Drink every time Luke says something about the drinking game. <laughs> oh, let's have a little sip of red wine whilst we're here then. Mmm. That's not tasting any better than it was 10 minutes ago. And Darren Cornelius says, I have a question. Technically, too. How long does it take to fill an art book? Um, never think about it, mate. It's not a mission. It's not a it's not like a, a fucking challenge. Fill it as you see fit. Um, it's different for every art book. Depends what I've got going on in my life. Drawing every day, drawing once a week, maybe once a month. Who knows? And um, do I try to fill them in? That's the second question. Oh, brilliant. I've already answered your second question. No, I don't. Um, I just do what I want. Like. Unless it's, unless it's your job, like you actually work for a company and the company says, I want five pages of art on this topic, go, um, then it's a hobby. And if it's a hobby, you should do it as much or as little as you like or if it works for you. So, yeah, I really don't count it up. I just do what I want, basically, because um, that's how I kind of live my life. If I can do what I want. Um, Okizia Emmanuel says, the joy of drawing. Indeed. And Terence V. Uber Geek says, Turn Mega Mega Code Name 1984 into a motion comic. I'd love to turn it into a motion comic. Um, but again, the issue here is time. I really wish I could do that thing in Naruto. You know when Naruto clones himself? Like he does all the Kagebunchi no Juto. And then he makes them go off and like they train. And then when he like deletes the clones and all the chakra comes back to him, he gains all of their experience and knowledge. Like I'd love to have like a handful of me. And then I'd get each one doing one of the many various things I want to get done in life. And then they could all just like, I'd absorb them all back in. I'd be the original one somehow. Um, and then I'd like have all their experience and skill and all the stuff we produced. Sell a V. Like, you know what? You've only got one life to live. You've got to just cut out all the flack of what you don't want to do and try to really lean on the things that really mean something to you, I guess. That's my life advice there. Panda God says, when are you going to start uploading to Pornhub? <laughs> No, man, my work's never going to be quite that naughty. Still got to keep it technically safe for work. That's the key. Random Girl for Life says, I don't know if you've been asked this already, but do you listen to Green Day? Oh, Random Girl for Life, you're fucking damn right I listen to Green Day. Way, way back, because Green Day have been around forever. In around about 2002, something like that, um, I was in a punk cover band with my mates, and we used to do Green Day covers. We were called Alaming, and it was fucking awesome. We played at house parties. I was lead guitar. Oh, man, good times. And yeah, even Green Day now's good. So uh, yeah, always got time for them. Zero Vibe says, um, you just ordered a book on human anatomy. Great shout, sir. It does involve a lot of reading. It does indeed. You will study as your life depends on it and show you my progress. Excellent. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Um, something that you guys came and sort of asked about on and off a fair while ago is like, what do you think you definitely need to learn and stuff like that with character designs? And you don't need to get super into it. But you definitely need to study at least basic human anatomy. It's one of the most incredibly helpful things I think you can do if you're drawing people and characters. Hussein Hassan says, draw more of The Last of Us, Mikey. I might will do. And Gear Checked says, please, please, please do some Inui Takehiko Vagabond draw of Mikey projects. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, are there links? I might link something. I know YouTube's got these new after video credits that you can kind of put up. But yeah, I used to do um, a lot of Inoue Takihiko studies. And by the way, if you've made it this far in the video, you are motherfucking hashtag hardcore crew. I bloody love you. 
Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, I've got loads of old Inoue studies that I never made videos out of, which I'm slowly uploading on there. So if you want to see some of that old artwork as well, come get involved on the gramming. I guess that's what you kids call it. And AOX says, thanks to you, my hopes of becoming a decent artist have just been revived. Awesome. Like, I love it if people get back into art. That's so cool. Just wanted to thank you for that. You're welcome, sir. Um, But it's you doing the work, so I'm really pleased for you, if anything. And have I ever thought about drawing the characters from Overlord? God, you know what? I'm so out of touch with all the anime and stuff that you guys are reading. I said this last time as well, but like, every time I record these episodes now, I end up with so many different tabs full of your suggestions. Overlord of a novel series? Yeah, what the hell? Okay, a kind of knight's in... He's got a skull knight. He's not quite Skeletor, and he's not quite the skull knight from Berserk. Yeah, and probably have a look. More suggestiones as ever. Thank you very much. And you know what? I think we're pretty much there. I think we've gone through all of the comments in the Joel and Ellie video. I'm going to really super, super quickly, because I've got like a little two-minute window to look at some more things, I'm just going to go back on my channel and I'm going to go to the time lapse di thing that we did. Because every time I do about 10 DWM episodes, I then just do a time lapse one. It gives me a week off and it's also kind of nice to look at. And yeah, first thing I see in that video, loads more comments. Oh, God damn it. Venom Culling says, hello, Mikey. I'm a small YouTuber that does gaming videos. I draw a lot in real life and I'm struggling to think of something to draw. Drawings are awesome. Um, and thank you very much. Oh, very cool. Oh, it's just a general thank you thing. So, yeah. You're welcome, dude. Really fa really glad it's helped. I haven't focused on any of the comments from this time-lapse one because I had to go back to the Joel and Ellie. Um, John Brady now follows me on Twitter and is sharing his work with me on there. Excellent, so I'll eventually get around to it. Um, RT by CG loves the work and you're doing your own time-lapses. Good on you, sir. And Air Master Salvatore wants to see some Joker from Suicide Squad art up as well. And then, oh, there's loads. Oh, most of them are just really, really nice comments. Thank you very much. It looks like you all really enjoyed that time-lapse video of just the last 10 episodes squeezed in with some generic super middle-of-the-road music on top. I'm really pleased. So let's end it there, guys. Obviously, in the background, I've drawn some zombies. You'll notice when I first started drawing the zombies on the left, really tight, really just struggling to get the idea out. By the time I was doing that big zombie face on the right, I'd really loosened up. It has way more character. Um, to it. It's slightly more graphic as well and I was much happier than the ones I was doing in the beginning. And that's the world of drawing, like you have to loosen up, even if it's um not been too long, you have to spend 5-10 minutes like really loosening up your drawing skill before you try to commit to something. It's it's re weird like that, you have to warm up your drawing ability like every day, like warming up the engine of a car. Um, But food for thought. Right, no particular topic has happened today, just catching up on your comments after the hiatus. Um, more art to come, obviously not quite an SAS this weekend, just a bit of digital artwork and eventually we'll kind of fall back into the normal pattern and these videos won't keep coming out so late. I bloody love you guys, thank you so much for following along, really means the world to me. Get in the comments and I'll see you next time. Take care!